Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Habakkuk, chapter 3. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shiganoth. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timon, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and His praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from His hand, where His power was hidden. Plague went before Him. Pestilence followed His steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled and the age-old hills collapsed, but he marches on forever. I saw the tents of Kushan in distress, the dwellings of Midian in anguish. Were you angry with the rivers, Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode your horses and your chariots to victory? You uncovered your bow. You called for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains you saw writhed before you. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and lifted its waves on high. Sun and moon stood still in the heavens at a glint of your flying arrows, at the lightning of your flashing spear. In wrath, you strode through the earth, and in anger, you threshed the nations. You came out to deliver your people, to save your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of wickedness. You stripped him from head to foot. With his own spear, you pierced his head, when his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though about to devour the wretched who were in hiding. You trampled the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. I heard, and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones, and my legs trembled. Yet, I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior." The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights for the director of music on my stringed instruments. Now that postscript, for the director of music on my stringed instruments, that is normally a prefix in the Psalms, and this is indeed written in the form of a psalm, but it's a postscript here. And so it's an instruction for the worship leader in the temple that this is to be done with stringed instruments, to be played and recited with stringed instruments. So this prayer of Habakkuk is a a psalm-like chapter. And it says in the first verse, it's a prayer of the prophet on Shigenoth. Now that word Shigenoth or Shigean is probably a particular kind of psalm. Actually, the definition is no longer known, but it is a psalm-like chapter, and it is believed that that reference is to um, a certain type of psalm. And so you may know this and you may not, but some Bible words, both in the Hebrew and the Greek, and this is a Hebrew word, some Bible words have no parallels outside of the Bible. And so the the context in the Bible, if it's only mentioned once or twice, uh, sometimes there is no 
external context to compare it to to give you a definition of the word. This is one of those words. But as I say, this is Habakkuk's psalm. So verse 2, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Lord, repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Now, we're about to hear a litany of things concerning Yahweh's visitation to Egypt to set his people free. And so the prophet says, Lord, I've heard of all that. I uh, stand in awe of your deeds. Lord, repeat them. In other words, Habakkuk is in a situation where the Babylonians are encompassing uh, Jerusalem and Judah, and they're about to conquer it. It's going to happen in Habakkuk's lifetime. He may actually be killed during one of the sieges of Jerusalem. We don't know. But from his position, things look pretty bleak. And he says, Lord, I heard what you did when the Jews were in Egypt. Why don't you do that again while the Babylonians are here? Deliver us from the Babylonians. And so the prophet reminds us of Yahweh's visitation with the following words. He says, God came, uh, the Holy One came from Mount Paran. Rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. This, of course, reminds us of Deuteronomy 33, 2, where Moses recalled the um, uh, visitation in Egypt. Moses said this in uh, Deuteronomy 33, verse 2, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned over them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran. So the same mountain is mentioned in Habakkuk and in Deuteronomy. Words of Moses, The Lord came with myriads of holy ones, from the south, from his mountain slopes. And so this is all familiar to um, a religious Jew. And of course, Habakkuk was a very godly man. He knew the words of the Torah from Deuteronomy. He then talks briefly about the plagues that swept through Egypt. Verse 5, plague went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and he made the nations tremble. And so Habakkuk is aware of these things, and then he asked the Lord if he was angry at nature when he made all these horrific um, plagues come on the earth. He says, were you angry with the rivers, Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? And of course, the obvious answer is no. His wrath and his anger were directed at Egypt. And then the other nations that um, Israel had to fight to get to the promised land. And so the words of Habakkuk continue the Lord came out to deliver his people and to save his anointed one. I believe in context, it's probably talking about the leaders of Israel at the Exodus account. He came to deliver his people and to save his anointed one. The anointed one at that time would have been Moses or Joshua. But it also could allude to his Messiah. He came to deliver his people and to save his anointed one, uh, Jesus, from uh, death and the grave. Habakkuk then explained his own response to these historical uh, visitations of God. He said, I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay swept into my bones and my legs trembled. And so his, um, he was awestruck, essentially. He declares his faith in God during the Babylonian situation. He says, yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. In other words, Lord, I know eventually you'll deal with the Babylonians. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. So even in the midst of this tragedy, he's going to take his solace from his relationship with God, as we all should. Ultimately, uh, Yahweh will uphold his people in times of calamity, even if it leads to death, the Lord will be with us. Verse 19, this is the closing verse. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. In other words, the prophet says he'll be able to navigate the coming days of calamity uh, with the grace of God on his life and the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to return in conclusion to Habakkuk's powerful plea for the Lord to return in his lifetime, for the Lord to come and, and do the magnificent signs and wonders that he had read about in the scriptures and he'd heard about from his ancestors. Friends, how many of you 
have heard of the supernatural deeds of our mag- our magnificent God, and yet um, you haven't seen similar things to what those in the past have seen. I don't know about you, but I, I've also heard of the Lord's deeds, and I've seen many things in the course of my life, but I want to see more of what made him famous. I want to see more of his strength revealed in the earth. I want to see more of his kingdom come and his will done in my lifetime and among those that I interact with. And so, Heavenly Father, we've all heard of your fame, and we all stand in awe of your deeds. Lord, we ask you, along with Habakkuk, repeat those magnificent deeds and signs and wonders in our day. Lord, in our time, in our generation, make yourself known. And Lord, if this is a generation of wrath, remember mercy, God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.